Mr. Mueller, I'm president of the Kutztown Area Democratic Club. I was saying to someone earlier, last the last time we had a debate, we could only fill up the first three rows, and today um, we're, we're packed, which is really a good sign for political involvement in our community, I guess. Uh, I'd like to just remind you that we have we do have cookies that are complimentary if you want to have a little snack. The bathrooms are, there's one through here and one in the back. It's, uh, both are available. Also, would you please turn your cell phones off? And having said that, I will turn this over to our moderator, Mike Morrow. Thanks. Uh, we had a great uh, first debate for the 187th House District. And to me, I'm really excited about that because uh, whoever wins the primary this month uh, I think would make an incredible state representative and uh, would well represent Berks County in this part of uh, the state. So I'm really excited about that. So now we have another opportunity and another opportunity to take another seat away from the Republicans and put it back where it belongs in Democratic control. And uh, so we have uh, the 15th Congressional District candidates uh, for the Democratic nomination with us tonight. Uh, we're using the same uh, rules uh, for those of you who weren't here for the beginning of the first debate. Too bad we're not going over them again. Uh, I talked it over with the candidates so that we could save time, and uh, we're going to jump right into it. And so, uh, you're up first. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Linda. Thank you all for being here. Uh, my name is Jack Smeaton, and I will beat Congressman Dent this fall. Uh, I am the only candidate in the race with a day one jobs bill to invest $50 billion uh, in infrastructure spending uh, in order to put Americans back to work. Uh, with a day one bill to preserve Social Security and Medicare for the next generation, and who is 100% committed to defend a woman's right to choose. I grew up here in the 15th District. I'm a proud product of a military family. Uh, after I graduated college, I served for four years on active duty. I was a graduate of Airborne School, Ranger School. I served as a tank and a scout platoon leader. Uh, I was very proud of my military service. Afterwards, I decided, like my father, to become an attorney. And I was working in private practice, paying off my law school loans in 2008 when the economy collapsed. And like a lot of people, I lost my job. As, my, as I said in my military unit, that was a significant emotional event when that occurred. I was very fortunate. I was able to get a new job right away. I began working for Democratic Senator Jay Rockefeller. And most recently, I served as counsel for the President's Commission on the BP Gulf oil spill. But at the same time, those jobs were temporary. And like many Americans, it was frustrating not knowing at times where the next paycheck would come from or where my career is going. And I was frustrated. I felt I had done all the right things. I'd served honorably in the military. I'd gotten a great education. I worked hard at every job I'd ever had. And yet the economy made it that difficult for that long to find good and permanent work. And at the same time, while 13 million Americans were unemployed, our Congress and our Congressman Charlie Dent did absolutely nothing to help the economy. That's unacceptable, and that's why I'm running for Congress. Thank you. I'd also like to thank Linda and Mike and the Kutztown Democratic Club for putting this on tonight. I'm Rick Dougherty. I'm the uh, chairman of the Lehigh County Democratic Committee. I'm serving in my second term. And I'm executive director at the Lehigh County Senior Center. I've been there for 16 years. I think we're the best senior center in Pennsylvania. And I really love the job. <coughs> what initially prompted me to get into this race was the Ryan budget plan for Medicare, which, as we know, is back with a caveat that now the age is 67 before you can even get it, while the Republicans also want to get rid of health care reform. And as the director at the Senior Center for 16 years, I know the value of democratic senior programs. We can be very proud. Social Security is ours. Medicare is ours. Senior housing programs are ours. And I know how they work. I know they work well. I see medical miracles every day because of Medicare. And Social Security has done what it was supposed to do. It has basically eliminated the devastating effects of poverty among senior citizens. Over and over again, at the federal and at the state level, Republicans seem to always want to take the solutions that we've created and privatize it. 
and not because of helping the people that are in need, I think, but mostly because I think they want to pay off their contributors. Um, they're doing it with the lottery now, they're doing it with other senior programs, and it's something that I'm very proud of in being a Democrat that we do create solutions for people, especially at this time in our nation's history when I think it's one of the most serious times going forward. I'm proud to be a Democrat, I've been a lifelong Democrat, and to fight for democratic values, and if I'm elected to Congress, you can trust that I'll be on your side. Thank you. The candidates have agreed to stay seated for this portion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, we'll be using the same format, except they'll stay seated. Uh, Mr. Doherty, uh, you talked about the Ryan budget. The first question is about the Ryan budget. The Ryan budget, recently passed by the House, has been dubbed the budget to nowhere. I like that. Please discuss cuts that Ryan budgets includes that you would modify and where you would draw more government. Well, first of all, as I mentioned in my opening statement, the uh, Medicare proposal, is it's an elimination of Medicare. That's exactly what it is. They call it a voucher program. They, they call it whatever. It's eliminating the Medicare program. Even by the Republicans' own numbers, where we, on average, pay in a little over 100000 to Medicare. We take out over 300 and some thousand dollars. There's no insurance company that is going to insure a 75-year-old out in the private market. And at least the initial budget, I don't know what the current one is, had 10 years out from now, the average amount of money you would get as a senior citizen would be $11,000 a year. That's after 10 years of medical inflation. It doesn't even work today. So even by their own numbers, it doesn't work. So that would have to go. In terms of revenue enhancements, we need to tax the wealthy very clearly. I, first of all, applaud working families who are getting by and we have incentives that they're not paying taxes. That's what I want. There has to be a minimum tax, as the President has proposed, on investments and for the wealthy so that there aren't any loopholes where they can get out of paying taxes like Romney did. I also support eliminating the tax cap on Social Security. There's no reason for it. And eliminating the tax cap on Social Security makes Social Security solvent for decades more, and the program is fine. Uh, I'm against the, the Ryan budget, and if you, look, if you look at our national debt, I like to think of a cartoon that I've seen of a man walking into a bank, and he says to his banker, I want to take out a mortgage on my grandchildren's future. And that's what we've been doing for too long in this country. And the answer, I think, is clear. We're going to have to raise government revenues, and we're going to have to modify some popular government programs. But what we don't want to do is we don't want to eliminate them. We don't want to end the Medicare guarantee. And that's what the Ryan budget would do. And that's the budget that Congressman Dent voted for. He voted for the Ryan budget last year, and he just voted for it again this month. What we need is we need what every single government commission that's looked into it has found. That's the simpson Bowles Commission, the Dimenici Riblin Commission, the Gang of Six. They've all said the same thing, that we're going to need to raise government revenues, and we're going to need to modify some popular uh, uh, government programs. Uh, and I am fully supportive of uh, the simpson Bowles Commission recommendations. I think that's what we ought to implement. We should not end uh, the Medicare guarantee as the Paul Ryan budget would do. Thank you. This question is to you first, Mr. Reed. Uh, the Obama health care plan, which they're now calling Obamacare, had its second anniversary two weeks ago and had its uh, uh, arguments before the Supreme Court last week. Um, a lot of people feel that that uh, is an important piece of legislation. Some feel it didn't go far enough. Whether, whatever happens in the Supreme Court, how would you solve our health care crisis? What are your thoughts on the single payer system? Uh, what would you do if they overturn it? Would you just leave it alone or try to do something else? Uh, the well, I, I am in favor of the Affordable Care Act. Uh, I think it's relatively, uh, uh, it, it ought to be relatively non-controversial. If you look at what it does, it does three basic things. Uh, it makes sure that insurance companies treat people fairly. Uh, no discrimination based on pre-existing conditions. Uh, uh, no lifetime caps on insurance. Those are things that everyone uh, can get behind. Number two, it makes sure uh, uh, that everyone has insurance. 
And number three, it, it provides hope for those Americans that are, that are not able to afford it uh, on their own. Now, those three things shouldn't be controversial. And they're certainly, uh, I think, constitutional. <coughs> and the reason I don't think they're controversial is the fact that the current GOP frontrunner instituted that very system in Massachusetts. The only reason uh, that the Republicans in Congress are against it uh, is because they're trying to deny the president a victory. Uh, it's, a, it's an idea uh, that has been accepted on both sides, and it's one that I support, and I certainly hope uh, that the Supreme Court uh, will allow. Uh, as the president said today, uh, he believes that the Supreme Court will, will uphold it. Well, why should your cancer treatment or that of your child have anything to do with where you work? Anybody? Mm. I, it doesn't make any sense to me. Why, as a society, do we have this thing structured with health care attached to employment? I think all of us, I don't care if you're rich or poor or black or white, we should have the same great health care. It shouldn't matter what's in our back pocket or what kind of car we drive or where we work. That's just basic fairness, and I think that's a basic American value. I completely support the Affordable Health Care Act. And I'll say one thing, if the, if the Republican Supreme Court knocks it out, then we go for single payer. And single payer will be constitutional. And that will end this argument, and then we'll have health care for everybody in America as it should be. This is your question first. Are you pro-choice or anti-choice with regard to women's reproductive rights? I'm pro-life, uh, very similar to Senator Casey's position. I do oppose the blood amendments, however, that he did support. And if I am sworn into office, I will be sworn in to uphold the Constitution. A woman's right to choose is a constitutional right. And in fact, the Supreme Court in uh, Planned Parenthood versus Casey made it very clear that when life begins is an individual decision, uh, not one to be determined by government. Uh, I am pro-choice. Uh, I think it's uh, very unfortunate that uh, when we have so many pressing national problems, when we've got 13 million people who are unemployed, when we have a $15 trillion national debt, uh, that what the Republican presidential candidates want to talk about uh, is whether women ought to have access uh, to birth control, uh, which is a debate that we thought was settled 50 years ago. And unfortunately, a Congressman Dent uh, has been part of this. Uh, Congressman Dent indicated that he would vote to uh, uh, repeal the Obama accommodation with uh, religious-affiliated universities and hospitals, uh, an accommodation that would allow women to have access to contraception under the Affordable Care Act. Uh, John Boehner wants to repeal it, and Congressman Dent uh, said that he would be in favor of it. Uh, Congressman Dent said he would be uh, 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 Congressman Dent voted in favor of the Stupak Amendment, which would have eliminated uh, abortion from insurance exchanges under the Affordable Care Act. Uh, Congressman Dent likes to say he's pro-choice, but in fact he's multiple choice. <laughs> and we need a candidate who, and I, I can't take credit for that, that was Ted Kennedy that came up. <laughs> uh, but we need a candidate who can, who can uh, uh, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with uh, Congressman Dent on that issue. And we're going to need a candidate that is 100% pro-choice in order to do that. And that's why I think I'm the best candidate in this primary. Another uh, Supreme Court-related question. The Citizens United decision uh, opened the floodgates on money, and it's, uh, it's amazing to me. Uh, I, I don't want to editorialize, but I just can't believe what's going on with these super PACs. Uh, what would you do as a member of Congress to uh, uh, rectify the situation with Citizens United? Uh, well, obviously, uh, it's difficult to rectify a Supreme Court uh, decision because you've got to pass a, a constitutional amendment, and I would certainly be in favor uh, of that. Uh, I think one thing Congress can do is, is make these contributions to super PACs uh, more transparent so that we know uh, where this money is coming from. But clearly, uh, uh, it's very troubling uh, in a democracy if you can have one candidate uh, uh, stay alive. And we've seen just in this presidential cycle, based on uh, a couple of uh, five million dollar checks from a casino magnate uh, in Las Vegas. Uh, that really uh, uh, gives the air of, of corruption 
uh, and it shows the corrosiveness of money uh, in today's today's politics. Uh, it's unfortunate a part of campaign that it does take money uh, to run a campaign. Uh, and one of the things that I'm proud of in my campaign is that, is that I've reached out to people that I know personally uh, who've contributed money, uh, who know that I'm a person with integrity, who know that I'm uh, a candidate uh, 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 that's willing to work hard, uh, willing to fight for people here in the district. Uh, and then I've raised that money uh, from people that I know, not, uh, not from political action committees. It was a terrible decision. So the first thing we need to do is to re-elect President Obama so we pick the next Supreme Court Justice. That's a key. Second is, in terms of a corporation being a person, I think it has, has no basis ever in whether it's with our founding fathers or even within recent history. It just makes no sense to me. I would like to look at, because we're, we're seeing that having a direct impact, obviously, as both of you mentioned, is on the campaigns. And one thing I would like to do is to push again for publicly licensed uh, broadcasters have a requirement to the public. And part of that requirement is to host debates like this. But we're, we're very fortunate with the local press in the Lehigh Valley covering this race in particular very well. Um, I haven't heard of any place where we're going to get on TV. Have you, Jackson? I haven't yet. And yet, in 1993, in Allentown, when I ran for city council, in the Democratic primary, we were on twice. And here we have a congressional race, a primary, at a time when there are crucial issues facing our nation, and we're not even going to get on television. So that's one way to offset some of the damage that's been done by this decision. And we get the next question. Do you support marriage equality or civil unions? I support marriage equality, and once again, as I mentioned with health care, I see it as a basic American freedom. And it should be in terms of our nation. Uh, states should not be allowed to discriminate. Um, we should repeal the Defense of Marriage Act. And if I am elected to Congress, I will certainly co-sponsor the repeal of that act. Uh, I also uh, support marriage equality. Uh, I'm very proud to have been uh, endorsed by Pennsylvania Equality, one of uh, Pennsylvania's largest uh, LGBT uh, organizations. I spoke out in favor uh, of marriage equality recently at a rally that uh, the local chapter had outside a Lehigh County Courthouse. Uh, there is no reason to discriminate uh, against uh, uh, someone's uh, a right to, to be with a, a a loving, a loving partner, no matter what their their gender or their sexual orientation. So I'm very uh, strongly in favor of marriage equality. This is uh, really two questions, but they're they're very much related. Uh, would you advocate to undo the Patriot Act and the attack on constitutional rights due to the National Defense Authorization Act? Um, there are there are elements of, of the the Patriot Act that, that trouble me. I don't know whether I would repeal the entire act. I don't. And the Patriot Act is a big piece of legislation. I don't know everything that's in it, but some things in there are very troubling. The, the sort of uh, 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 ability to look at, at what people are checking out of the library. Um, uh, the, the, I would, I would, there's, so there's certainly aspects of it that trouble me. I'm, I'm not going to say that I would fill the, the entire thing carte blanche. But uh, I consider myself a civil, civil libertarian, and, and I'm very concerned about it. And the National Defense Authorization Act. Um, I, I'm aware of the National Defense Authorization Act. I believe that's the act that uh, authorizes uh, uh, the, the, the president to um, is this, uh, the Assassination uh, Act. And I, my, that's the, that's I don't know. I'm sure that's not what the bill sponsors have called it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but that's that's extremely troubling because it uh, it's not just against you know foreign nationals. It's for uh, people that um, that are American citizens. And I don't necessarily believe that an American citizen overseas that, that is uh, uh, taking up arms against the country deserves a trial. Uh, but an American citizen is uh, owed due process rights. And there ought to be some way that that citizen uh, uh, can be heard if they're, if they're on that, and whether that's a, a way to approach an American embassy, an American consulate. Uh, there's got to be some element of, of due process uh, for, for any American citizen. 
uh, before the government. And, you know, part of that could be uh, rather than having this decision simply lodged within the uh, the executive branch, you know, there there could be an independent uh, judicial uh, uh, review of it, just the way you have a, a FISA court that reviews foreign surveillance uh, uh, wiretaps. Why not have an Article Three court that can look into uh, uh, these uh, the, these cases? Same question. Well, yeah, um, Archie, you could be leaving tonight, disappear, we never see you again, and uh, mm -hmm. that's permissible. Then. The uh, Authorization oh, Act um, <laughs> should have been vetoed by the President. I appreciate that he expressed his concern about it. I appreciate that he said he would never use that authority. But um, as supportive as I am of the president, that's when I wanted our president to issue a veto. I'll send it back. The Patriot Act I'm very troubled by. Um, and uh, it should be revised significantly, possibly a few, or. Um, overturned because it does not meet constitutional muster. I mean, this is America, and, and there is a risk to being free. Um, and the government should not be allowed to spy on us without the authority of the courts. And the government should never be allowed to arrest us um, secretly without trial. It's outrageous, and it's frightening that it's going on. 